All right. Uh, for anybody that watches this after the fact, welcome to the video. I'll probably be repeating myself here for the guys that jump into the live stream, if anybody joins. Um, working on a Series 417 for a guy that I know. It's actually the guy that I got the 6080 and that diesel D19 from. Um, I've got that side over there finished already. <clears throat> and I figured uh, this is something that a lot of guys dread doing. I figured I would uh, show a couple of the things that I do to make it not so dreadful. Um, biggest thing, well, one of the things is this. Uh, the tire's got fluid in it. And a lot of you guys know that switching tires can be a project in itself sometimes. And, uh, you would use a cherry picker to pull that off, but then that thing's kind of flopping around. And this just kind of holds it all in spot. And the jack under there holding it up works out pretty good. Well, welcome to the stream. You didn't tell me who you were. Oh well. Um, so in here, I've got it just taken apart to this point. Uh, this top flange moves. The only thing that's not pivoting is the uh, the adjuster right here on this this rod that runs to the brake. It's not pivoting on that. It's stuck, which is an e easy fix as well. Um, but oh well, yeah, I found this wrench down inside of there. It's Eleven sixteenths wrench. What I'm here doing. Is getting this pin out um, I have fought with these over the years and uh, I used to have a puller that would go on there um, but it never once worked for me I've never once had that puller work um, and then the last time I tried it I broke it and I never bought another one so uh, the time that you can waste in trying to save that pin is not worth just getting a new pin and then uh, you can go get that 7 16 rod uh, I wouldn't suggest going to get Chineseum from your local um, machine shop or sorry from your local hardware store uh, go to your local machine shop and get at least 1045 tool steel to put on there that'd be um, well I've used it in the past and it's always worked so um, I have I had a pin for that side uh, from the last project left over and uh, parts are coming today and I'll have a pin for that side so I guess I'm going to stop talking um, I'll get this camera set up here somehow let's see here I get away that I can see what I'm doing here and not get torched. Get not get my phone torched here. There we go. That should work. So So like I said, I've wasted so much time on this and um this in the past I have. Not on this project. I've just learned over the years not to fight with them and uh, I'm doing this project for somebody else like I said so it's you know charging them by the hour so I could spend an hour trying to get this out and then that's gonna cost him more than just buying a new pin to put in there um, and then there's still a possibility that I spend all that time to try to get it out and I can't get it out so uh, these pads are busted um, something else I wanted to touch base on the pads in here let me get my light the pads are, are broken as you can see this is something that anytime I've tried to reshoe them you, there's just rust on them and unless these metal plates are about perfect then pads will crack um, 
they usually crack when you're putting them on but then the couple that I've gotten back together that didn't crack uh, after <laughs> after a little while anyway they they broke in there and then we were right back apart with them and I've had good luck with just getting the new pads on there again worth the time and effort so without further ado let's have some fire Fire's good. fires out safety first guys I did have a bottle of water here so boom so there's that step and then obviously as you see you know how to run a torch you can you can get that pin to where it's not gonna be harmed at all open the door here not breathe the mist in I know I go I go live at some of the oddest times, don't I? <laughs> but it's just when I was working on it, and um, I figured with the title, anybody that was trying to do this and wanted to see it could watch it later and be helpful. So nice and broke pads themselves. I mean, they they look pretty new. They kind of look like somebody tried to reshoe them. This side came apart a lot easier than the other side did. Um, and also, the these pads aren't asbestos. They don't have the texture. They have the texture like the new ceramic or whatever they are. Um, so at some point, this side was done. The other side, on the other hand, was not. This, this is something that amazes me. If you, This is the springs that came out of that. Can you see it? There's still orange paint on it. Um, like, that spring was put in there in 1967 and wasn't messed with again. Kind of crazy. Got more fire, that's good. <laughs> okay. So once we get that torched off, you can get, oh, and it's a pain in the rear end sometimes to get it to bite. doesn't even want to spin okay um, so what you can do now to get it started moving to break it free see right here you can see the end of that pin um, now that will 
go in a smidge. <coughs> you don't want to beat it in too far, but you can use this as just a way to get that initial rust broke free and all. Maybe. You get a better hammering device. Well, better for the funny angle that I got here anyhow. Doesn't want to move. <clears throat> okay, yep, we got to move a little bit. That's all it takes. Now, hopefully, trying my best with the light here, guys. Camera. I don't claim to be a professional at any of this, so that's the only thing that's saving me at this point. See what happens. I should have just put some heat on it. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna need some heat. Um, actually, I'm just gonna You'll see what I'm gonna do Fix my problem This is the other trick that You know, I'm kind of doing it backwards but I need to get a new regulator for this oxygen tank you guys hear the popping it's because I added a hose and I can't set the regulator correctly because it's broken and uh, so now I deal with I deal with this so basically now what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut this thing Small section out. Now, while that's hot, hopefully, I can get a hold of this thing. Fire, fire. <laughs> fire spawn. I can get this darn thing. To grab anything here. Jesus, you think I didn't know how to use one of these, huh? <laughs> hey, I never claimed to be a professional.
Yeah, I'm getting phone calls. Didn't know who that was. Boy, I don't want this. There we go. There. Got it to turn. How simple, right? Now, Bad timing to be calling me, guys. I'm actually surprised that was Craig, guy, a friend of mine that I met from viewing. I'm surprised he's not on here watching. I'm gonna spin this a little bit. You know, this is a really cheap uh, monkey wrench, too, so I really need to invest in getting a decent small monkey wrench, because, as you can see, this thing, it just doesn't want to, doesn't want to flex right, honestly, it just doesn't, pain in the rear end, how about that, that's what you get for having China stuff. Not all of it's junk, but about 90% or more of it is. Last, well, last fall I broke my good monkey wrench, and I got nobody to blame but myself why I'm fighting with this, actually. Use junk tools, have junk results. There, it's getting easier to turn now. What? Do 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 do. Uh. <clears throat> you guys remember those vice grips I was just using? I remember them. You think I can remember where I put them? No. No, 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 no. Oh, look at it. They're right there. Oh, that's why I don't remember where I put them. I dropped them. Okay. Try this again.
this one's being a pain guys and of course it is it's one i was trying to show how easy it was right or can be but still it's, it's not that hard it's just a little time consuming dealing with rusty stuff always is thing you can't get it but might have to grind the edge on it um so i got something to really grip with doing our best here but i don't know if <sighs> Ooh. yeah i'm just not getting any sort of grip on this thing so So I did two things there um, number one was heating it up hopefully it'll move better number two you see me working the edges here I was just trying to give myself a little texture um, a little something for these to bite into like that and then when it's um, hot like that obviously it's a little malleable and you can bite into it better anyhow but um, yeah, basically, I didn't try to blow any of the any of the meat off of that, uh, any of the metal off of it. I just tried to make it so that, like I said, there was some texture there, and just kind of manipulated the material a little bit. <sighs> just work it, boom. Well, I, I almost made that look like I knew what I was doing, right? Um, then obviously we just take it, pound this out. <coughs> Cut it again, obviously. Hot, hot, hot. 
There. So that's a, usually the most, uh, it's usually the hardest part of, a, of this job right there, is getting that pin out. It can really be a pain in the rear end. Um, now, what can you guys see down here? All right. So, there's still another issue. Let me get a screwdriver down here, get the stuff out of the way. So this is moving, that's good. And you can see that these are free as well. I don't know if you can see them moving or not. Yeah, you sure you can. So them are free as well, but the rod that comes down down here, I've been spraying it, and there's the, mm, if I could get the light in a position that's not, uh, can't really. Uh, there's a rod right there that comes in. That's the foot rod. There's a pivot point right there. Kind of can't get the light and everything to work. There's a pivot point right there that needs to be moving um, that was stuck. It appears that we are uh, starting to get some pivot out of it now, though, which is a good thing. And that's just from spraying lube inside of there. Well, maybe not. I can't feel it doing it. Can't, can't move it yet, so maybe not. But that's pretty simple, too. Um, we just take the torch and heat it up. And then hit it with our long punch that I got. Stick down from the top and I just give her a few smacks. And uh, what that does, that will loosen up that pivot joint. And usually it makes it so that you can turn it on the threads there, too, and adjust it. Sometimes you need a little bit more persuasion, but... <clears throat> That's the gist of it. Um, so, here. Live chat. Oh, nobody commented. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, that's kind of what I wanted to touch base on today. I just wanted to show how all that. Um, well, I'll just show how I get them out of there, what experience has taught me. Um, I should have just cut it right from the beginning, but I was trying to show it moving. Um, I guess that's what you would do if you're, like, hell-bent on saving the thing. Um, but, uh, usually it's pipe dream, good luck. I just cut them out. Uh, makes life a lot better. A lot easier and if you're doing the work for somebody it's less time consuming and in the end run compared to paying labor or getting it out that's cheaper 17's got a factory three point on it like what you would see on the 190 pin hitch on there everything series four uh, as far as i know um the guy that owns it, this was his dad's tractor. Uh, they've owned it one family ownership. And uh, here it is getting fixed. Like I said earlier, this was the gentleman that I bought that 6080 and that diesel D19 from. This is his tractor. So nice to meet people and be able to work on stuff, get the advantage or, you know, get the chance to work on people's stuff and kind of get the name out there that whatever you guys know what I mean I appreciate you guys watching lay a comment down there so I know who you are I don't know if it my camera is just all over the place this has got to be terrible <laughs> perfectly honest messages live chat there we go all right i think i have the live chat up now hey william i do look at that it popped up thanks for checking it out 
Nothing too exciting. Me blabbing. I one of these days I should actually schedule a live chat like during the weekend when people are not at work and doing stuff, and and I'll have kind of a Q and A and talk to people about what they want to see on the channel. I've been I've been uh, I've been thinking about that. I just haven't done it yet. John, you got this job coming up real soon. Hey, there you go. I hope this has helped. Um, I've done this numerous times. This by far isn't my first rodeo on these. Um, the first time I did it, I was... Uh, there was multiple times where I was just convinced that there was no, <laughs> no way I... There's no way I can do this, you know. And I, I had the torch at that point. I just... I uh, wasn't utilizing it correctly and didn't have a lot of money the first time. Well, I didn't have any money, honestly, the first time. was lucky to be getting pads for the darn thing. Um, so I was trying to save everything that I could. And I, I finally ended up just cutting it out anyhow and going over to the machine shop and getting some uh, 1045 rod. It's a 7 16 rod. Um, I didn't want to use the Chinesium stuff from the local mart, but so this is me. I'm just trying to get this pivot point down here to move, which it looks like that might have just did it. Give her another crack, though. Boy, if I just did that, just move. That was lucky. That was easy. I can get it on the right spot. Trying not to bugger up the threads. There we go. I think it. I think it did it. What are you working on your 45? What uh what are you doing? William, if you don't mind me asking. Hmm. It did pivot, but it's not moving good. I'm gonna give it some heat. <clears throat> Just kind of curious. Well, I like hearing about other people's projects and the struggles that they have because then it doesn't make me feel as bad about the struggles that I have on a regular basis. <laughs> All right, fire again. Fire is good until it's not. <laughs> now, I might be able to get lucky with down here. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. yep. 
Look at that. One pivot achieved. Now, uh, what are you guys looking at down here? Not what you should be looking at. What is going on? So, as you can tell, this pivot right here was the one I was trying to show you. It's moving. Everything's moving under there. It's flopping around, which is what we want to see. Now, I'm going to take and try to spin this adjuster. Which is, look at that. It works. It works. It works. Let it cool off just a little bit. And I'll put some penetrating oil on it. Yeah, so the torch is about your best friend in this job. And that goes along with a lot of stuff here. If it hasn't been done, the fender bolts will be rotting out. You have to cut them. The uh, foot pedals will be stuck and you'll have to heat those up. And Still too hot, it's just evaporating. But anyway, uh, oops, <laughs> little fire in the hole. Got back on the things. Thanks for your time to do the videos. You're welcome, Andrew. Thanks for watching. Previous owner used the wrong head gasket. Well, how do you do that? No world. I have new sleeves and pistons for it. That's good. In gear, I'm at 45 LP, and I need to rebuild carb on second one. A fun little job. There are worse things to do. That well, I guess the 45s, as far as splitting them, a little bit more involved than these because them split there instead of back here or taking the whole engine out uh, not too bad though yeah literal fire in the hole no kidding yep you're still here john thanks for thanks for checking in so um this thing everything that could be stuck on this thing was stuck uh the these didn't work this was completely stuck. I've got it all moving now. I gotta put a, put the pin back in there, but I it took me it took me a little while to get that off of there. Um, but the bushing, everything was good. It just had old grease that was hard and stuck in it. Um, the seals in here were leaking terribly, as you can tell. The seals not existent there. Ah, oh, I see. That's kind of interesting. Old box work tap deep. Ah, well, I know, like, okay, so I don't know about the WD forty five, but I I do know about the that that LP nineteen sitting right out there. If you can see it right over that Jeep. Um, I'm in the middle of, uh, I just got the pistons back for it. Here's the engine. I just got pistons, which we had to have made. Um, some pistons have been non-existent since the eighties. So they're in there and I have an extra set of them too. I ordered, uh, just because they're non-existent. So I'd imagine somebody sometimes going to need them. Um, so there was three different size of head gaskets on the thing and I, I can't remember the numbers off of them by hand, but the was it the diesel? I think was the thinnest one, and then the LP was medium, and the gas was the thickest one. And um, I measured the head gasket that we got, and like I said, it's been a while since I've done this, but um, measuring them. Excuse me, the guy that owns the tractor sent me the right head gasket for the LP, so I don't know if that might be. Uh, I guess I didn't think about that when you said they used the wrong head gasket. It being an LP.
old serial numbers need to have a bottom cap run down them. <laughs> That's good to know. It's good to know. <laughs> Selling new old stock pistons. Andrew, um, so I'm a one-man show this year. Um, Bob is, we'll call it, on vacation. And uh, the first tractor pull is, is coming up like towards the end of this next month here. Um, however, I am, I'm going to be so busy, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to make it to the first couple. Let's put it that way. Um, planting season. I picked up an extra 50 acres from what I had last year, and uh, I'm I'm focusing on the farm more than I'm focusing on the the uh, the tractor pulling right now. Uh, don't worry. Now we'll get we'll get some we'll get there this year. There'll be some tractor pulling, some good pulls. That's not a question, but uh, to begin off the year, I don't think I'm going to be making the first few so I'm gonna be planting and uh, guess you guys will get some farming videos from me <laughs> rather than uh, pulling videos so so I have correct gasket factory power steering to install Ooh, nice nice Michael S. Gross. That's who to get them parts from, huh? Boy. We searched, uh, me, the guy that I'm working on this tractor for, his name's Ted Bisker. Um, he's been known in the Alice Chalmers community for, I mean, forever, it seems like. Uh, and I believe it's Wendell's AC book. There's a WD-45 that's featured in that book. Uh, at the time of that, Ted was the only guy that they knew that had a restored WD-45 diesel. So that's his diesel in it. And it's kind of neat knowing the backstory of it because that diesel is depicted as a factory WD-45 diesel. But that particular one has a D-17 engine, diesel engine in it. So that was, it's... Uh, I know it's kind of neat knowing the backstory and knowing the guy that actually owns the tractor. Um, and actually, there's a video, uh, the last pulling video that I put on, um, there was a Freeport, Illinois pull. Ted was there with that tractor pulling. So it's it's kind of neat. I'd like to get, I'd like to get a picture of the tractor in the book, you know, and talk about it a little bit and then say, hey, here it is now pulling how many years later. So that's kind of neat. Um, so anyway, him and like um, um, Norm Minerts, a lot of people in the Alice community know Norm. Uh, he's really big. I mean, he's like, back then he was the guy that you talked to about overhauling the 45 diesels as far as I understood. And uh, he's still, he's still pretty good. Worked with Ted for many years. Ted's a great guy. Ted is a great guy. I, uh, my, you might, I'm guessing maybe you worked with him at Kelly's. Uh, my dad worked at Kelly's too. That's how roundabout way we know the, the family knows Ted. Um, and then just recently he's been watching my YouTubes and we got to talking and, you know, put small world that, well, they know dad and everything. So, um, yeah, Ted's, Ted's awesome. Anyhow, we spread our fingers out. Um, I mean, we had Norm, we had Bill Depe. Um, I had spread my fingers out to people that um, I was, we went to the, the, that was right around the, well that's how long I've been working on this LP, or getting, trying to get parts together for it, it was last summer, I think it was in July, uh, we went to the Baraboo show, uh, Gathering of the Orange and Baraboo, uh, and we were, all of us were there, everybody that I just explained was there, and looking, asking everybody, and there was just nothing. It's just, they, you, you mentioned LPD-19 pistons, and the Alice guys, they just look at you like, no, nah, no. Nah. 
so so we uh i ended up calling a company out in california and uh they made the piston let me grab one actually <laughs> while we're sitting here talking about it and i i started working on that uh 19 last year and i've got half of a video put together on it um and i've been waiting so anyway most of you guys don't even know about this lp lp project and i've been working on it for over about a year now so here is the regular you know your standard lp piston um this one issues if you can see that crack right there so every section has got that crack in it I think it's like that over here as well um, so then if you guys don't know uh, pin placement this is so alright it's higher or lower higher lower so that the pistons come up higher into the into the stroke um, other than that it's the same as a gas pin placements different so this is what we have now modern pistons uh, GMLS rings to go on it and you notice it's only three ring design. However, um, Ted wanted this made to be the same compression. So we didn't change anything to raise the compression. This is supposed to be, this should be as close to stock piston as you can get for one of these. And I had to have it custom made. Um, it looks like they started with literally a 350 piston. <laughs> Anyhow, um, if, if you guys need one, uh, or need, if you know anybody looking, I guess I'd be the guy to get a hold of at this point. Uh, same, same goes with like bearings. Um, a lot of these parts that are obsolete for these Alice's, I'm in the process of rebuilding multiple ones. I, for some reason I can't seem to just get simple projects where I can get pieces everybody's kind of I, I, I kind of run into the rarer stuff at this point in my life um, but anyway uh, bearings for Buddha engines are non-existent um, and I have a company that's able to make bearings um, you first need to know obviously that your diameters you know if, if your block was ever honed at there or anything you need different Anyway, I can get you, you, we can get whatever you need. Um, they're a little bit more pricey, but the fact is that they're, we're able to get them. So, you know, that's, uh, that's where that's at. Let me shut this one. I'm just blabbing, I'm not checking messages here. Gotcha. Nothing so far. Missouri AC Club. I don't even know even know who that is. I'll have to look into them. If he's able to find new old stuff like that, they're definitely somebody that's worth knowing the way it sounds. I appreciate you guys checking it out. Um, I kind of got sidetracked here working on stuff, but I'm right here at this point where I just got to grease things up, loop things up here. Oh, I got to take this hub out. His father was an AC dealer. Interesting. Guess I can do that while we're talking here. Very interesting.
Okay, so we're going back down into the into the hole. Got to take that hub off. Uh, those are 12 point bolts on it, and I have this specific socket that sits in a shelf or sits in a drawer and pretty much only gets taken out when I'm doing this. It's this socket right here. Reason being, it's a 12 point, um, and the, the other 12 points that I have are all impact, and the wall is too big to fit in there to go in. So I had to had to buy that many years ago. As you can see, how new it looks. It doesn't get used very often. Yeah, so for you guys that uh, that have stayed here to listen, you got to see a little bit of future projects with that 19. A little spoiler alert of those pistons. That was kind of the biggest issue of that. I brought a bought an expensive one because I planned on using it with the impact. That's why it's a it's a Dewalt. Um, well, they seem to make some pretty good uh, pretty good sockets and stuff like that. I'm more of a Milwaukee fan when it comes to power tools, but you cannot argue with their uh, with their drill bits and stuff. I'll tell you that. These things can be a pain to get out sometimes. This right here is what I like to... Um, I think every shop should have at least one of these, if not more. They, it's, it just comes in handy so often, I can't even... I, I can't even express. So, just shove it in there and give her some tweaks. And be careful because there's spacers back here. Did I get? Almost felt like I still had a bolt in there. But, um, there are spacers in there, so you got to be careful not to lose them. Or booger them up, I guess. I don't know what you could really do. Just be aware that they're back there, how about that? And which that controls the play on your bearing, and, um, yeah, stuff like that. Oh, I don't know if you guys, I don't know what his problem is, it's that time of year and there's probably other cats around that are in heat, I would imagine, but God, he's driving me nuts. Stuck on this side. There we go. Okay. Ow. Damn. Yeah. Kind of loosen it up so that you can pull it out. Then I probably a better way of doing this, but I don't know it. So. Sometimes they just come out. Other times you fight with them for 10 minutes. You're getting them a millimeter at a time.
being super stubborn. I've got it loose. But that's it. The problem is it's recessed into the casting up here so you can't get anything back behind there um, which is uh, probably a good thing because there's the metal shims back there so I don't really want to be prying back there much that help. Okay. Now, this is an odd use of a feeler gauge, I know. But, it is a trick nonetheless, so. Once you get this out, if you get a feeler gauge in there, try to get a thicker one. It's nice and flat, so it goes in there. And then you can pry from the bottom here. Thousands by thousands sometimes. Of course, because I'm on camera. So then we do the same over here. Maybe. No, we don't. My goodness. Oh, this thing is stuck. <laughs> you guys can see that I'm dealing with down here. I'm not saying you might not ruin your feeler gauge, but and when you pry it, it keeps it this far up there. Because again, like I said, all you got to pry against in here is itself. You see that gap? It slowly gets.